Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Design with the Bard. I am your host, Creepy Bard, and today we're going to talk about rewarding player skill. Player skill is a difficult concept to quantify, and because of that, it can be a very difficult thing to balance for, let alone to reward for. So to facilitate this conversation, we're going to talk about... Larva. And mules, and chrono boosts. Oh my! Yes, it's time to talk about StarCraft II's macro mechanics, because if there was anything that rewarded player skill in a competitive multiplayer environment, it would be these off-maligned mechanics. However, before we talk about the background of this particular mechanic, let's answer a more pressing question. What the hell are they? The macro mechanic in StarCraft II refers to a separate mechanic for each race that rewards the player for regularly keeping an eye on their production and base management, the macro environment of the game. At high level play, mastery of these mechanics is required to compete, as without them a given player will fall behind, either in production or resource gathering. Since each of these is so different, let's go over them individually and dig into what these mechanics do and how they improve the macro game for each race. The Terran have an ability on their Orbital Command Center called Call Down Mule. Using a small amount of energy that the Orbital Command Center builds up over time, a powerful SCV is summoned that can carry more minerals and mine faster than any other worker in the game. This can be used with basically no cooldown, and since it uses energy instead of time, this ability can be incredibly powerful when you need a rush of minerals or can simply help you mine out a given area much quicker than your opponents. Of the three mechanics, this is by far the most forgiving, as you can get just as much value out of using it all at once as you can by using it over time. The second mechanic, Chrono Boost, is a Protoss ability that's found on the Nexus that simply increases the production of a building by 15% until it is moved to another building. They get one of these per Nexus they construct, and they can be used on every production building that can be built, from their first Nexus to their last Stargate. Building another Nexus gives you another Chrono Boost, allowing you to speed up the production of two buildings at once. These speed increases do not stack. Because of this, a mechanic that seems simple at first becomes significantly more complex, encouraging a player to keep an eye on their production times so they can maximize the value of their Chrono Boosts. The third and final mechanic, the Zerg Queen's Spawn Larva ability, allows a player to produce three additional larva from a single hatchery, allowing them to get significantly more unit production completed at a faster rate. This mechanic, however, is the most skill-intensive of the three, while the other abilities are a bit more forgiving, allowing the player to store up their charges, or simply set it and forget it. The spawn larva ability requires near-constant attention. Left alone too long, and your production falls behind. Use too much, and you lose larva, as hatcheries are only capable of supporting a set number of larva. While this makes it easily the most frustrating mechanic, it can also be the most rewarding, once it's mastered, allowing the Zerg player to truly outswarm their opponent when used appropriately. But why are such mechanics necessary, or even important? Before we can talk about why they're important, we need to understand why these mechanics were implemented in the first place. In previous iterations of StarCraft, such as the original or the Brood War expansion, macro mechanics didn't exist, and many players wouldn't have even considered asking for yet another tiny irritant to keep track of on top of everything else to monitor in an RTS. However, with the announcement of StarCraft II, many people in the community began to worry that the user interface updates that the new iteration would allow, specifically the ability to select an infinite number of units and buildings, could make player skill a less important aspect of competitive play. And so, Blizzard would go to work coming up with a way to reward player skill in competitive play, until a community member would eventually recommend macro mechanics. While the macro mechanics would go through various changes, eventually they settled into the rules they are now, for better or for worse. Which leads us into why these mechanics are, themselves, so important. But I feel like you might be able to guess by now. The macro mechanics of StarCraft II actually serve dual functions. First, and most obviously, they reward high-skill players with a production boost, allowing them to get a leg up on their less-skilled opponents, and practically guaranteeing that those higher-skilled players will win a given match. This is what they set out to do, so this is working as intended, regardless of how one might view the mechanics themselves. The second thing that the macro mechanics do is to improve the feel of their races, Sure, without these mechanics, each faction has a general theme to it, 
The Terran are an adaptive race, the Zerg are a hive mind swarmy race, and the Protoss are a forward thinking, outmaneuvering race. But with the addition of the macro mechanics, each race gets that little aesthetic tweak that makes the player truly feel the experience of leading those armies. The Zerg mechanic makes people who play it feel twitchy, feeling like they're some sort of hive mind over a galaxy spanning feral beast. The Protoss mechanic forces its players to think long term about how the match will go and plan their production and defenses accordingly, feeling closer to playing a game of chess than an RTS. Meanwhile, the Terran mules give the impression of a commander allocating resources quickly in an attempt to adapt and conquer their environment. While these may not be perfect mechanics for rewarding player skill, they fundamentally improve the experience of playing each race, making them feel unique and exciting each time you sit down to play. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this video. Go ahead and let us know what you thought in the comments below, and feel free to make plenty of suggestions. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe, as well as maybe support us on Patreon. We'll be putting out videos every two weeks, but if you can't wait that long, we have plenty of old content for you to go through, though some of the older stuff is pretty rough. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.